Hi there, it's Chica and Joe, and today we're going to show you how we made this giant Barbie box photo booth. Okay, to make our giant Barbie box, we're gonna start with this huge cardboard box. This actually came from a sofa that Joe had delivered recently. This is a great box because it's huge. You can find big boxes like this at furniture stores, ask them if they have big cartons that uh, couches and sofas might've been delivered in, or go to an appliance store. Sometimes a refrigerator box will work. Anything that's big enough for you to get in will work. This box is actually, believe it or not, a little bit too big. It was an eight foot sofa, so the box is too big. We're gonna cut this down a little bit, be no problem. Get it down to a little bit better size. To make the box a little shorter, we just cut one of the corner seams so that it would lay flat, and then we cut off about 16 inches from all the sides. Then we stood it up and lined the corner seams up again to reform the box shape. We reattached all the cardboard edges using water activated gummed packing tape. This stuff is amazing for attaching cardboard. It comes in a roll and you cut off what you need, then you just wipe it with a wet sponge to activate the glue. It sticks almost instantly and adheres so well to cardboard. Don't even mess around with duct tape or hot glue. They will not hold anywhere near as well as this gum tape will. So we just wrapped all the seams with this tape, closing up the gaps and making the edges nice and smooth. This shipping box had a removable bottom panel, and when we stood the box up on its end, that panel ended up being the back of our Barbie box. We trimmed it down to the same length as the box, and then it was time to start decorating. We first covered the back of the box with a light blue bulletin board paper that we bought in a big roll. We used spray adhesive to adhere it in a big solid sheet. Then we moved on to the sides, and this time we used this really amazing fabric-like bulletin board material called Better Than Paper. It's got a glossy plastic coating that is exactly the look we're going for with this giant toy box, and it's the perfect shade of pink. We cover the sides and the top of the inside of the box, but we left the floor alone for now. I'll talk more about that in a minute. With the insides done, we stuck the back panel back on, and we used more of the gum tape to attach it. We went all around the edges, making it smooth and seamless. And like I said before, the adhesive is super strong and the tape is sturdy. So these edges and seams will not be coming apart. With the inside done, we moved on to the outside, which we wrapped with more of the pink better than paper material. I'm telling you, this stuff is amazing. It doesn't wrinkle or tear and it's so glossy. It worked perfectly for this project. I can't imagine how difficult it would have been to wrap these edges with regular paper. We certainly would have torn it on the corners or edges and then had to start over. We used a combination of spray adhesive and duct tape to wrap the sides of the box and the edges on the front and then wrapped the excess around to the inside and attached it. So the floor I teased you about earlier. We figured we will get a lot of wear and tear from people standing on it, so we wanted to make it removable and replaceable if needed. We cut a piece of cardboard to fit and then wrapped it with more of the pink and then we just plopped it down in the bottom of the box. With the box structure done, it was time to add the signage. We started with the Mattel logo, which we printed and attached to a round cake board for a perfect circle. We covered it with glossy contact paper to give it a plasticky look, and then we just stuck it to the top corner of the box. For the bottom of the box, we needed a giant Barbie sign. So I cut a piece of cardboard to size and covered it with more pink material. Then I added a big vinyl cutout that I made with my silhouette machine and a Barbie font. You can get a link to the Barbie font on our blog post to make your own vinyl cutout. But if you don't have a silhouette or a Cricut to cut the vinyl, we've got you covered there too. On our blog post, you can download a 10 piece template to print out on paper and then tape the pieces together to create a giant Barbie sign to add to your box. By the way, we also have a printable for the Mattel logo on the blog too. Adding this sign was so satisfying because it totally made the Barbie box look so complete. We were so happy because we were getting so close to this being done and it was coming out so great. It just needed a couple more finishing touches. If you are as excited as we were to see this piece added, be sure to give us a like and a subscribe. Barbie boxes always have accessories wired to the back of them, right? Ours had to have them too. We made a comb, purse, and a pair of Barbie's iconic high heel shoes. And we've got you covered again with printable templates that you can download on our blog post. We just printed them onto cardstock and cut them out. Then we used some double-sided tape to attach them to the back of the box, and that was it. This giant Barbie box came out exactly as we hoped, and we love it so much. So much, in fact, that we just had to try it out. Please welcome Dr. Barbie and Western Barbie. I know, we're so adorable, right? Thanks so much for watching this video, and we hope we inspired you to make your own life-size Barbie photo booth. Please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss any more of our fun projects and party ideas. Thank you.